Before I get into this episode, I need to point out that Dragon Wars features a lot of flashing effects, especially as combat begins and as spells are cast. It's some full-screen, really high-contrast rapid flashing. If you're sensitive to that kind of thing, it's okay to give this one a miss. The weirdest thing about the Famicom port of Dragon Wars is that it's published by Chemco. Don't they know Pony Canyon is supposed to handle the Famicom ports of American computer RPGs? In fact, Pony Canyon probably should have handled this, since Dragon Wars was designed to be the Bard's Tale 4. And they're the ones who are publishing the Bard's Tale series on the Famicom. The original computer version was Interplay's big game for 1989. The idea was to merge the dungeon crawling of the Bard's Tale with the complex skill-based RPG system of Wasteland. In Dragon Wars, you step into the shoes of adventurers who are searching for a lost mystical city. Unfortunately for you, the king's gone a bit crazy, and so you're arrested on suspicion of using magic, stripped of all your possessions, and thrown into a giant open-air prison. Your first task is to get equipment and escape. But then after that, the world is wide open. The first thing you're going to notice in Dragon Wars is that it's a point-based system for characters. You don't roll for stats and pick a class. You're given 70 points and assign them to different abilities. There are five primary attributes. HP, Strength, Dexterity, Intelligence, and Spirit. Spirit's the one that affects magic points. And then there are over 25 skills to pick from. Some of them, like the magical abilities, have a high buy-in cost, where you have to pay a lot of points to get that first rank. Not all skills are created equal, though. In fact, some of them have fairly few uses. And for weapons, you don't want to spread out your skill points. Besides, all the good weapons in the game are swords, so everyone should just be spending points there. You create four characters like this, or if you're in a hurry, you can pick between four pre-generated ones that have a basic role assigned to them. Besides your starting four, you can recruit up to three additional characters as you play the game. And there is a front line and rear line, with the front line consisting of the first four characters in order. Once you're in the game, it's your usual first-person view dungeon crawler. You can walk around, check things out, and this time there is an auto map for you if you hit select. You can see all of the squares that you've walked on, Hitting B brings up a menu where you can check out your inventory, cast spells, use skills, distribute any skill points you've gained from leveling up, arrange the party, and save the game. Combat is a bit more involved than you might expect. While you'll have random encounters, and then you choose if you're going to fight or run away, after that you give commands to individual characters, and here's where things start getting messy. If you choose to attack, you have three options. Normal attacks, heavy attacks which do more damage but are less accurate, and disarming attacks which are really inaccurate but reduce the effectiveness of some enemies. And if you're casting a spell, well, there are four different kinds of magic, and each of those has spell types, and then once you've drilled down that far, you can finally pick out a spell, and in some cases, decide how much power you're going to put behind it. And then when you're actually exchanging blows, it's possible for characters to get knocked out rather than outright killed. You have both health and endurance. When health runs out, you actually have to get resurrected. But if you're just stunned, a bit of recovery will do it for you. Now I didn't manage to get out of the open prison when I was playing. I just didn't have enough time to really drill into it. But since I have beaten the original PC version, I can tell you a bit about this. One of the interesting things in Dragon Wars is that there's often multiple solutions to a situation. Not always, and a lot of later areas wind up being fairly linear. But in prison, you can escape by faking your death, swimming around the patrols and guards, fighting your way out the front gate, finding the secret escape passage, or taking part in gladiatorial battles until you've won your freedom. To get equipped, you can find the black market, 
or you could volunteer to fight in the arena where you'll get some free equipment. And it's possible to recruit some fellow prisoners to your side. There's a lot of options that you can find by exploring and talking to people. And then once you're outside of the walls, you just have to start exploring everywhere, see what you can find. Dragon Wars has a bit of a mixed reputation in Japan, and it's a lot like the reputation the original PC game has. You've got people who go, wow, this game's so cool, I can do anything. And you've got people going, this game is so stupid, I have no idea what to do. The game is also fairly rare. Copies don't seem to be available very often. I think Dragon Wars is the biggest, most involved dungeon crawler on the Famicom. The only thing that even rivals it is Might and Magic. And I actually think Dragon Wars is a little bit friendlier to players as they start out than other dungeon crawlers like Bard's Tale and Wizardry. But that said, it is a very cruel game. It's really easy to screw up your characters. Spreading your skill points out is disastrous. And if you're not prepared for some basic things at the start of the game, then you probably never will have them. If you play for an hour or two, you'll get out of that prison, and then ten hours later you might find that you have to restart. Dragon Wars is a very solid port of a game that I didn't expect to see ported this well to the Famicom. This is a fairly accurate port, though that could be a positive or a negative. <laughs>